To give us some sense of what democratic socialism is, can you point to an example, an extant example of it that works? Venezuela seems like a, an example of democratic socialism. Would you say that it is? And if so, does it work? No, I don't think that democratic socialism as an ideal has been able to be embodied in a larger social context. There's different forms of it. Some are bad, some are medium, some are better. But the fundamental commitment is to the dignity of ordinary people and to make sure they can live lives of decency. So it's not an ism, no, brother. It's about decency. It's about fairness. Right. It's about the accountability of the powerful vis-a-vis -vis those who have less power. The workplace, women dealing with the household, gays, lesbians, trans, black people, indigenous peoples, immigrants. How do we ensure that they are treated decently and that the powerful don't in any way manipulate, subjugate, and exploit them? Well, I mean, if that's what democratic socialism is, then I'm basically on board. I do think that ordinary people, middle class people, ought to have Absolutely. dignity. And I think that our current systems make it hard for them to have dignity. So I, I agree Absolutely. with all of that. Um, no, you're not on board, Tucker. You put on your populist hat, your fake populist hat, and you pretend to be a paleo conservative. You pretend to be a libertarian. And then you go on television and enthusiastically support Donald Trump sending federal troops on to protesters. That's just who you are. That clip is old it's from 2018. It was circulating around Twitter today and people were talking about, oh, look, Cornel West convinced um, Tucker Carlson there that socialism, democratic socialism might be the way to go. But this is kind of a thing that Tucker Carlson regularly does. He'll say immigrants are poor and dirty, but then rail against the elites. But the difference between progressives railing against the elites is that they'll actually direct policy to make sure that the elites have less influence. Tucker Carlson and conservatives like him, they make it about it's the brown people, it's the black people, it's the immigrants. They're the reason that um, that you're unhappy. And that's kind of the reality of, of, of his commentary, even though he's more elite focused than say a bootlicker like Sean Hannity. But it is a bit of a farce and there's this really, I think, interesting but sometimes frustrating discussion on the left where they'll really criticize someone like Glenn Greenwald, who I don't agree with on many things, but I really admire in many ways, uh, Pulitzer Prize winning extremely brave journalist, for example, he'll go on Tucker Carlson and people will say, why are you legitimizing this person? Greenwald, how could you? You're hashtag canceled. I, I think that's ridiculous. Uh, but Cornell West there showed how you can go on one of those programs and be effective because he didn't cave to Carlson's framing there. And that's what was key. He maintained his autonomy in the ideas that he was trying to espouse and had Tucker come to him, as opposed to sometimes when people on the left go on, they're there to facilitate and help a specific narrative that Carlson and his white supremacist writers are trying to put forward. So I think overall, it's a great thing to have leftists on those programs if they're able to hold their own, like Cornell West obviously can and was able to there, because his audience, they're hearing ideas they wouldn't normally hear, no matter the reason that Cornell West was called on there. And I don't think that Tucker Carlson has many guests like Cornell West who can hold their own. Oftentimes they're guests that reinforce what he wants to portray about the left. So, as long as you aren't agreeing that Tucker Carlson's a part of the populist movement, which is absurd, and you're smart about it, I think it's a really good idea. So just, I saw this Vox article from a few years ago that kind of described the trick that Carlson plays on his audience, uh, just to give you guys a better sense of what I'm trying to talk about here. When Carlson talks about the normal people he wants to save from nefarious elites, he is talking usually about a specific group of normal people, white working class Americans who are the real victims of capitalism or marijuana legalization or immigration policies. In this telling, white working class Americans who once relied on a manufacturing economy that doesn't look the way it did in 1955 are the unwilling pawns of elites. 
This deviates from the free market capitalism that conservatives believe is the solution to poverty, not the creator of poverty. When other groups, say Black Americans, have pointed to systemic inequities within the economic system that have resulted in poverty and family dysfunction, the response from many on the right has been, shall we say, less than enthusiastic. Yet white working class poverty receives, from Carlson and others, far more sympathy, and conservatives are far more likely to identify with the criticism of elites when they be believe those elites are responsible for the expansion of trans rights or creeping secularism than the wealthy and powerful people who are investing in private prisons or an expansion of the militarization of police. It's enormously hypocritical, obviously. If you are a small government conservative or libertarian, you should be outraged by Trump sending federal unmarked troops onto protesters and uh, tear gassing them and throwing them into vans. That's very much against the Constitution, but Carlson was enthusiastic in cheering that on. But that's because most people don't identify with a specific ideology, even those who are hardcore right-wingers who watch Carlson's show. They're a complex stew of things, and that's unless you're a hardcore political person, which is a majority of the country, a, a significant majority. So that's why I, I, I do see a ton of value in good, smart leftists going on channels like Fox News and presenting what they believe. I mean, I'm reminded of Bernie Sanders in the primary when he went and did a Fox News town hall, hall with Brett Baer and he said who to the audience, Bernie, who would be in favor, or maybe it was Brett Baer and they were surprised, who would be in favor of a Medicare for all system run by the government and a majority of the audience raised their hands. That might have reached a very small number of people, but it might have got them to think a little bit more. And having someone like Cornell West on Tucker Carlson's show and having him potentially, and some people in his audience, um, see what he's trying to, to articulate and maybe warm to those ideas, that's it's just not a bad thing. I can't see how it's a bad thing. I really can't. No matter what you think of Tucker Carlson's, pe pe Tucker Carlson, people online are trying to say, Cornell West didn't change his mind. Are you being silly? Of course he didn't change his mind. I'm, no one's arguing that. That's not what matters. What matters is, is that it may have planted a seed in a few of his viewers' minds. And that's really what we're trying to do here.